If you're watching this video already knowing it's about open source licensing, I'm impressed because when I think about open source licensing, I think about old gray bearded guys sitting around arguing about what freedom means, or maybe a bunch of those same old bearded guys sitting in a circle singing Kumbaya. Free software, my friend, free software. And I'm not gonna lie, there's a little bit of that in there, uh, but there's more to it, thankfully, and that's the stuff that I actually wanna cover today. So when we talk about open source, you probably already know that it's more than just licensing. Open source is this big philosophy regarding freedom. It's freedom to use code, freedom to share code, freedom to modify code. All of those things are part of what free software and open source software really means. Now, there are licenses involved because that will dictate what you can and can't do with a particular bit of source code for a program. And the term that they've kind of coined for this concept is called copied left. And it's copy left because copyright means you can't use somebody else's stuff, but with open source, you can use somebody else's stuff. So it's copy left. See how clever that is. Anyway, the whole idea of copyleft and open source licenses all come down to freedom, like I talked earlier. In fact, there's two acronyms that you've probably already seen, even if you're not involved with open source. FLOSS, like for example, I'm often on the FLOSS weekly podcast at twit.tv. Uh, this stands for Free and Libre Open Source Software. Uh, FOSS just stands for free and open source software. The difference is extremely subtle because they mean the same thing. The only thing is when somebody says FLOSS, they're kind of emphasizing that Libre part, which means uh, Libre is not the it doesn't cost something part of freedom. It's the you can do what you want with it part of freedom. Uh, you've probably heard the term like free as in beer and free as in speech. The L is talking about the free as in speech, meaning that you're free to do things uh, whether or not you pay for it. But FLOSS and FOSS can almost be used interchangeably. And now you know what those silly acronyms mean. And when it comes to free and open source software, there's two groups. There's the Free Software Foundation, uh, which you've probably heard of. Maybe it's that Richard Stallman guy started it, that image I showed earlier. Uh, this is the original. It's been around longer than the open source initiative. Uh, it is where GNU came from. Like if you've ever heard of GNU GPL, that's where that came from is the whole concept of uh, free software. And again, free software, they really emphasize the freedom as in freedom to do stuff uh, with the software. Then the open source initiative is very, very similar. It's, a, I mean, these are such subtle differences and mainly the differences are just so that old people can argue. I'm not going to lie, uh, but the OSI tends to be more business friendly and it allows for more licenses, more permissive licenses even. Uh, it's called the open source initiative, like I mentioned, but the, the important importance is really with the licenses that are allowed. The Free Software Foundation is pretty strict about what you can and can't do with licenses that it approves, and the OSI is a little bit more lax with what it considers to be open source. And it really does come down to licensing. All of these weird initials down here, these are all different licenses that exist under the open source umbrella. Maybe not under the Free Software Foundation umbrella, but under the Open Source Initiative umbrella. Again, the umbrellas are weird and they kind of overlap. It's, it's very frustrating. But on this end of the spectrum, we have more permissive licenses. And over here, these are more restrictive licenses uh, considered copy left. Now, now, how what that means with permissive is if you use the MIT license on your software, that means anybody can take that source code and they can use it for whatever they want. They can wrap it inside their own a little program and they don't have to share the source code with anybody. They can sell this program that they made for money. Uh, the MIT license is very, very permissive in what it allows you to do. The ones on this side of the screen are very permissive, like the B. BSD license, the Apache license. This is actually Apache 2.0 license. And while the Apache license is going to be a little bit different than the MIT license, and it might have a few more restrictions, 
same thing with the BSD license and the MIT license and the Apache license. All of these on this side of the screen are going to be more permissive with what you can do with the code. And then as you go this way, they get more and more restrictive. Now, what that means is when you get more restrictive, it means that yes, you can use the source code from whatever is licensed in like GPL2. You can use the source code, but you have to give away and make available any of the source code that you write that includes these uh, this open source code that you're using. So if you use something licensed in GPL2, you can do that. However, you also then have to release your code because you've used GPL2 code. So when you add to it, you can absolutely do that. But then whatever you write has to be available for everybody else to look at as well. So that's one of the, what we mean by more restrictive and copy left. Now, there are some middle of the road type of licenses too. Uh, for example, the LGPL3, this was designed originally for libraries. So if you use a standard library file that's open source in your package, you don't necessarily have to include all, or release all of your source code you use these library files. This is actually renamed to a lesser GPL3, which is more information than you need right now. But the idea is that as you go like towards the middle, these things like this is the Mozilla license, the MPL 2.0. Uh, that's what uh, Mozilla uses for like Firefox and things like that. It's a little bit more permissive with what you can do with the source code. The moral of the story is it's extremely important to know what specific license uh, a piece of open source code that you're going to use is licensed under. And if it doesn't have any license attached to it, it's copyrighted. That's how things work. If you don't assign it a license, like you say, I'm not going to put a license on this. It's automatically copyrighted, at least in the US and I think many other places, but uh, it's automatically copyrighted. But then it gets a little bit strange because what if somebody takes a fork and and then you could you take your fork and then you take the the license off. It, it gets really, really confusing, but it's important to understand what something is licensed with so that you know what you're what you're allowed to do with that code and also if you're writing code, you want to make sure that what other people might do with your code is what you want to have done with your code. For example, if you write something and then somebody else takes your code and they wrap it in a proprietary software and they sell it, and maybe the wrapping is hardly anything. Maybe they just compile it and like change the theme and then they sell the program that you've been giving away for free and they sell it for a million dollars. They get to keep that million dollars. Maybe that's not the license you want to put on your open source project because you're going to be shooting yourself in the foot. Maybe, maybe that is what you want. Maybe you truly believe that what you wrote should be freely available for anybody to use for whatever they want, in which case there's a license for you there too. There are over 200 different open source licenses. It gets really complicated really quickly. And there's been tons of fights in the world open source world and business world over uh, determining what you can and can't do with code when it's licensed and in a certain way or another. It gets really messy really fast. And then are you ready for a little bit more craziness? What about stuff that is not software? Can we have an open source or an open license for something that isn't just written software code? Well, you bet you can. Uh, for example, photos, music, videos, they can be licensed under Creative Commons, which is an open sort of license for things like photos and music and video. And what you can do with this kinds of Creative Commons licensing, and there's various versions of Creative Commons licenses that allows you to do things like use it for whatever you want. For example, the image that I used in an earlier slide of like a person with question marks, uh, I was allowed to use that. I could modify it. I could use it commercially. I could do whatever I wanted because it was released with a Creative Commons licensing in a way that allowed for me to do anything I wanted with it. But some licenses that are common in Creative Commons are you have to attribute who originally made the photo or the music or the video uh, or you can use it but you can't use it if you're going to sell it or you can use it but you can't modify it like if that was a license on that image earlier I wouldn't be allowed to put a smiley face on the dude I would have to leave it just as I found it so there are lots 
of variances to a Creative Commons license. So if you're going to use somebody's photo, music, videos, etc., you have to pay very close attention to specifically what is outlined in Creative Commons because just being Creative Commons doesn't mean that you can do anything you want with it. Uh, you have to look at the fine details. And then lastly, I want to talk about business models when it comes to open source software because yes, you can make money using open source software that's perfectly acceptable and it's allowed and people should be able to make a living uh, even if they rely on and release open source software there are a couple really common business models uh, one that is kind of getting outdated but it was one of the original ways to make money in the open source world is to have a, a paid support model right all the software is free all the code is free you can do whatever you want with it but if you want support you pay a professional who knows it really well, usually the person who wrote it, uh, you pay them for technical support or you pay them and they might even modify the code to fit your needs. So that is one model to uh, make money uh, as a business using open source software. Uh, another one is to release software, but not all the features. Some of your features are proprietary, like you have a different module or something that you add to the the base open source model. This is actually pretty common uh, right now. You'll have like, oh, this is free to use. And if you buy the pro version, you can also do thing B or whatever. One of the original ones that used this model was I used to work at a school and uh, we would use a uh, squid guard as a proxy server that we could like filter out some stuff. But there was an issue where you couldn't use squid guard as a proxy to filter out sites that were uh, served over HTTPS or SSL because they were encrypted and SquidGuard had no way to know that. Well, you could pay for a premium add-on from another company that would uh, look up domains. I don't even remember how it worked, but the idea was you could use the software for free, but if you wanted that special feature, you had to pay for a subscription to that special feature. And that's still pretty common right now where you get like a lot of stuff, but then the premium model cost a little bit more and they separate it. They're, they're really sneaky about how they do it. It'll be like a separate program. So even if they had to release all the source code for their, for their open source project, uh, there's an add on that is proprietary. That is all their code. So they don't have to release the source code to it. So it can be really sneaky how you get around the open source model by and charging for something. But again, they're releasing a huge product for free. So it's not like they're being shady. It's just, you have to be really careful with what license you use and how you go about releasing your code. And then, of course, there is the other model. I don't know if this is really a model, but um, where you give away your software for free, but maybe your software is a delivery system, right? May and by delivery system, I mean like maybe uh, you give away your video delivery system, but the content is really what is important and somebody's going to pay you for the ability to, um, you know, watch their content or, or music or whatever it might be. And it, I, while this isn't exactly the same, I could picture like, I don't know, maybe YouTube is open source. Maybe the YouTube video delivery platform you're watching right now, maybe it's open source. I don't know. But if it was, that would probably still be fine because it's not like I'm going to host YouTube in my basement. I don't have the bandwidth. I don't have the storage. I don't have the uh, programming front end knowledge, all that stuff. So a lot of times you can get access to software, but it's not going to do you a lot of good because you don't have the infrastructure to support such a thing. So anyway, there's lots of ways to make money using open source software. But the nice thing is that if you use open source software and you add to it, you often have to contribute those additions back to the community so somebody else can take that and build on top of it as well. It means that there's not a whole lot of reinventing the wheel because the wheels were allowed to use, right? Like the Apache web server. If I make an awesome website, I can serve it using the free open source Apache web server. I don't have to like invent a web server if I just want to make a cool web app. Anyway, that's the deal behind open source licensing, what it means, how it works, um, how it's cool, how it can be frustrating, and why old people with beards often fight about what freedom really means. Anyway, learn everything, do what you love, and be kind. I'll see you at the next video.